Hi. Um, so before I start, um, this is some visuals. So audience, yes. want to come a little closer? <laughs> they get they get really close, don't they? Okay, <laughs> you're gonna regret that in a bit. Right there. Um, <laughs> but. Before I dive in, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, I wanted to say a couple things. Um, so as some of you know, it is, we're in the middle of Hanukkah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and uh, I wanted to say a couple things about answers to questions I frequently get asked, semi-frequently. Um, the first one is uh, about Jewish food. What's the food like? And the best description I've come up with is it's designed so that if you get lost in the desert for 40 years, you come out, you're still digesting. <laughs> um, the other one I get is about different holidays, is what are they about? And most Jewish holidays can actually be summed up with they tried to kill us, they failed, let's eat. <laughs> uh, Purim, Haman tried to kill us, he failed, we get cookies! Yay! Hanukkah, Antiochus tried to kill us, my peeps hid, hid in a temple, hiding has traditionally worked well for us, <laughs> didn't kill us, now we fry everything in oil and eat. So um, several years ago, one of my friends gave me a book that really resonated with me. And I've taken to incorporating it into my Hanukkah, tra Hanukkah tradition and reading it to my friends every year. And since you guys are my friends, I am going to read it to you. Yay! Yay! Thank you. It's, it's a picture book, which is why close is nice. but. You'll get the idea either way. It's called The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, A Christmas Story, and it's by Lemony Snicket. <laughs> <laughs> it's a performance piece. Okay. This story ends in someone's mouth, but it begins in a <laughs> tiny village more or less covered in snow. The snow had fallen during the long night, during which children had pressed their faces to the windows looking for a glimpse of a man who they suspected of bringing them wonderful gifts. But instead, they heard a terrible noise from a certain cottage in the neighboring arrondissement, as a word which here means place where something was being born. Here's the village. Aww. Pretty village. This cottage was already regarded with some suspicion, as it was the only place not decorated with flashing colored lights at this time of year. The thing that was being born was a latka, a word which here means potato pancake. Latkas are a traditional part of the celebration of Hanukkah, a holiday commemorating a miraculous Jewish military victory. Nearly everything in this world is born screaming, and the latka was no exception. Even though the latka wasn't conceived and born the way you and I were conceived and born, but instead was fashioned from grated potatoes, chopped onions, beaten, e beaten eggs, and a dash or two of salt. Once these ingredients were properly mixed, the latka was slapped into a pan full of olive oil, heated to a very high temperature, and this is when it began to scream. The latka was suffering so much that it leapt out of the hot pan and out of the window of the cottage and began to run screaming down, down the boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> this may seem like unusual behavior for a potato pancake, but this is a Christmas story in which things tend to happen that would never occur in real life. This is a little photo bombing squirrel that will appear throughout the rest of the book. <laughs> 
The Lotka ran past a row of flashing colored lights, which hung from the rain gutters of a less suspicious cottage. What's all the ruckus, said the lights in unison. We're the ones who are supposed to be dominating the neighborhood with our cheerful glow. I was just thrown into a pan of boiling oil, the Lotka cried in reply. Can you believe it? Yes, said the flashing colored lights, but we can't imagine why. Because I'm a Lotka, said the Lotka. The olive oil reminds us of the oil used to rededicate the temple following the defeat of Antiochus at the hands of the Maccabees. The oil was only supposed to last for one night, but there was a miracle and it lasted for eight. Plus, frying makes my skin crispy and brown. So you're basically hash browns, said the flashing colored lights. Maybe you can be served alongside a Christmas ham. I am not hash browns, cried the latka. I am something completely different. <laughs> the locker rounded the corner and found itself face to face with a candy cane, which wrinkled its red and white nose at the latka in distaste. I'm trying to sprinkle the night air with my peppermint scent, the candy cane said. Your mouth-watering smell, not to mention all that yelping, is spoiling the effect. My mouth-watering smell is part of the cozy feeling of Hanukkah, the latka replied. It reminds us that things are better now than they were in 175 BCE, when my people were not allowed to practice their religion. In order to study the Torah, they had to hide out in caves. And when they heard Greek soldiers approach, they pretended they were gambling with a small spinning top called a dreidel. Sort of like Joseph and Mary hiding out in the manger, said the candy cane. Someone should write a Christmas carol about you. I am not part of Christmas, cried the Laka. It's a totally different thing. Audience participation. The screams of the locker grew quieter and quieter as the pancake ran out of the village into the surrounding forest. Its utter fury was unabated, a phrase which here means the Laka was still very annoyed at the objects to whom it had spoken. But it was quite tired, and so it decided to rest for a few minutes beneath the branches of a little pine tree. The pine tree was napping, but it woke, at the, woke up at the sound of an object plopping down at its feet. Love the facial expression in the photobombing squirrel. It's fantastic for those that can't see. <laughs> Are you a present, the pine tree asked? Presents are pretty much the only thing allowed to sit beneath me during this time of year. The Laka sighed. Presents aren't really a big part of Hanukkah, it said in a voice hoarse from screaming. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts to loved ones, of course, but it's more important to light the candles for eight consecutive nights, to commemorate the miracle in the temple and the miracle of victory, even when you are thoroughly outnumbered, so you shouldn't give up hope. Plus Santa Claus, said the pine tree. The Latka was too exhausted to scream. <laughs> Santa Claus has nothing to do with it, the Latka said. Christmas and Hanukkah are completely different things. But different things can often blend together, said the pine tree. Let me tell you a funny story about pagan rituals. <laughs> But before the bungee could begin its story, a family came trooping through the snow, searching the forest carefully. Uh oh. We shouldn't have waited until the last minute to get ready for the holidays, said the father and the family, who is holding an axe. We'll never find a good one. You shouldn't give up hope, said the mother, and pointed at the pine tree. Look, it's perfect, said the daughter. Beautiful, agreed the son. Such a marvelous shape, said the mother. And its skin looked so crispy, said the father, and reached down and scooped up the latke from the snow. We'll need to reheat it, of course, but this will be perfect for Hanukkah dinner with a topping of applesauce, sour cream, or even jam. I'll refry it in oil, said the mother, to remind us of the rededication of the temple. 
and the triumph of the Maccabees over, over Antiochus, added the daughter. After hiding in caves all that time, the sun chimed in. <laughs> the father smiled down at the locket in his mitten and then stared curiously at his other hand. What was I thinking bringing this axe, he said to himself. <laughs> The family strolled back to the village, walking past all the cottages with flashing colored lights and smiling politely at the candy canes until they reached their own home. The family carried the latke into their home, which was warm and cozy, and sat down at the table, which was lit with the flickering candles of a menorah, or Hanukkah, which is a branched candelabra designed specifically for the holiday. He's got a little pillow of sour cream. Tasty. Yes. It is very frustrating not to be understood in this world. If you say one thing and keep being told that you mean something else, it can make you want to scream. But somewhere in the world, there's a place for all of us, whether you're an electric form of decoration, peppermint scented sweet, a source of timber, or a potato pancake. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere, and the latke was welcomed into a home full of people who understood what a latke is and how it fits into its particular holiday. And then they ate it. Cut off. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs>